Unit 4, Chapter 6 Unification of Germany Introduction After the defeat of Napoleon in the Battle of Waterloo, the map of Europe was redrawn at the Congress of Vienna in 1815. The Vienna settlement had disappointed the German liberals because they were hoping for a united Germany, but instead they got the German Confederation of 39 states which included the states of Prussia, Austria, Bavaria, Hanover, Saxony, Württemberg. The states in the confederation differed in size and strength from one another. Some were big like Austria and Prussia, whereas the others were very small. The German confederation was presided over by Austria as it was decided at the Vienna Congress. The Austrian ruler did not show much interest in Germany but at the same time opposed the spirit of nationalism in Germany and also did not allow the German confederation to become powerful and always tried to keep Germany weak and divided. Prussia was another powerful state of the German confederation and was under the rule of the autocratic rulers. In the 18th century, Prussia had defeated Austria twice and in the 19th century, it had made a mark by leading Germany in the war against Napoleon. Prussia would have established a powerful German state before 1848, but its rulers after Frederick the Great had no vision and were inefficient. The feelings of nationalism in Germany were kept alive by the writings of the poets and the writers who had glorified the German language and its rich historical tradition. The process of German unification had taken a definite step when the Zollverum was formed. Zollverum. The first step towards German unification was taken up through the creation of the Zollverum or the Customs Union. Due to different custom duties in different parts of Germany, there was no free movement of goods from one part to another. Thus, commercial treaties were signed by the different states which agreed to carry out free trading among them by removing custom duties which were levied on the goods passing from one state to another. In 1819, Prussia had signed such a treaty with one of the small states. Then most of the states came under the Zollverim. Though Germany was politically divided, but it was in the economic sphere that she had achieved unity. This inspired people to think of a national union. It was through the Zollverin that Prussia connected herself to the other small states through the financial bonds which established her economic leadership. Austria had not joined the Zollverin and was indifferent to it. This helped Prussia to take the lead in the process of German unification. The Revolution of 1848 The year 1848 was a period of revolutions in Europe. It began first in France and then in Germany and in many other European states. In 1848, there was discontent in the different parts of the confederation and among the different sections of the society. The educated classes wanted freedom of speech, press and education and they demanded national unity and a constitutional government, whereas the working class wanted economic security. Austria was the main opponent of the popular demands in Germany, but due to the uprising in Austria, Metternich had to flee from Austria. It was the success of the revolution in 1848 that the educated middle class tried to unite themselves together and implement the nationalistic 
principles. It was at this time that the German Confederation had agreed to form a national assembly to establish a united democratic government for Germany. The Frankfurt Parliament 1848 to 49. The National Assembly met in July 1848 at Frankfurt to deliberate on framing a constitution. According to this, a German empire was to be founded as a close federation of more than 30 states. It was to be headed by the King of Prussia as the emperor and was to consist of a legislature with two houses. one representing the states and the other the people the assembly requested frederick william the 4th of prussia to be the emperor but he refused since he believed in the theory of divine rights of the kings so he would not accept the authority from the common masses thus the assembly failed and had to be dissolved rule of william 1 william 1 ascended the throne of prussia in 1861 after the death of his brother frederick william the 4th he was in favor of an united germany without austria and was keen on introducing army reforms to make prussia more powerful but his plans were rejected by the prussian assembly so he appointed bismarck as his minister this began a new chapter in the history of prussia Otto von Bismarck The great questions of the day are not to be solved by speeches and parliamentary votes but by blood and iron These were the words of Bismarck after he was appointed as a minister which clearly sounded the change which would be introduced in Germany He had definite views regarding Germany's unification and they were supported by King William the 1st Firstly he believed in increasing the military strength of the Prussian army which he did even though he had to face opposition. Secondly he believed that the unification of Germany was to be achieved by the king of Prussia. Thirdly he held the view that if Germany was to be united under Prussia then Austria should be defeated. And this was possible only through the military conflicts thus Germany was involved in three major conflicts which had completed in the process of german unification these were war with denmark in 1864 austro prussian war in 1864 and franco prussian war in 1872-71 so war with denmark 1864 this conflict took place over the schleswig holstein question the duchy of schleswig was under the control of denmark whereas Holstein was a member of the German Confederation when the German ruler tried to incorporate it into Denmark Prussia resented it and Bismarck opposed it and convinced Austria to help him in dealing with the Danish ruler with Austria's help Bismarck declared war on Denmark and defeated it but after the conflict the two duchies became a bone of contention between prussia and austria which in turn led to the austro-prussian conflict austro-prussian war 1866 this conflict was no longer a conflict for the control of two duchies but turned out to be a conflict for the leadership of germany the austrians were defeated at sadowa and austria decided to retire from germany and agreed to allow prussia to reorganize the german states franco prussian war 1870 to 71 after the conflict bismarck had annexed those states in the north which had earlier resisted prussia and the north german confederation was formed the states in the south were not ready for annexation Bismarck had realized that in this process France was the greatest obstacle thus a conflict took place between Prussia and France in which Napoleon the 3rd of France was defeated and he surrendered to Prussia the war ended 
with the Treaty of Frankfurt in 1871 by which France gave Alsace and Lorraine to Germany and she also paid a huge war indemnity to Prussia in January 1871 William I King of Prussia assumed the title of Kaiser Emperor of Germany at Versailles in Paris and thus was born the German Empire with this the process of unification of Germany was complete <laughs>